How's it going? I trust that everyone is feeling a little better than yesterday. All right, in today's audio, you will be flabbergasted on how to work on this question a several thousand times over the following month or two. Wow. Once again, please pay close attention to this conversation. The ending is super. Wow, wow, wow. Please go all the way to the end. I'd like to thank you for listening to my audios. Wishing you an awesome day. Enjoy and chill. You hear this all the time, every seminar. So I just gave up thinking about getting up here. Half my questions have been answered. And here I am. So you let go of the strong question that was causing resistance enough that you couldn't get in the chair? Yes. And now you're going to give it to us? No. No. Hear this. In other words, we really want to make a point about this. Sure. So you let go of that. And so now what do you want to talk about? Is it different than that was? Well, I feel like it needs to be because if I focus on that subject, I'm going to have the same negative emotions. So I'm. So you'll be in the chair and still in a state of resistance. Well, I I hope not. Well, you would be. Let us be clear about this. So there's something that's unanswered. And so you let it go. Okay. And when you let it go, you light it up. Yes. And so now you're up here. Don't bring that back. No, and I, I don't want to. I want. That's the point. We wanted to make sure everyone was understanding. Right. So isn't that interesting? So I'm going to pay a boatload of money. Maybe I'm going to get on an airplane and fly to see this ghost. <laughs> but I'm not going to be encouraged to talk about anything that's important to me. <laughs> Because something about talking about what's important keeps it from happening. Right. Good. You got that. Yeah. You got that. So the first segment today was, I resonated with it unlike anything. It was, it felt so leading edge to me. The whole conversation about Monday really felt good. Oh God, now my mind is going blank with the, oh, with the lions and being more about satisfaction, and I'd really like to go further. The reason that that conversation feels so good to you is because it really is the leading edge of this conversation that we're all having together. It's the fine-tuning of why some things feel better than others, and it doesn't matter what it is that you want. It doesn't matter whether it's a material object or a pile of money or a relationship. It doesn't matter what it is. The reason that you want it is because you believe you will feel better in the having of it. So everyone is reaching for this satisfaction. And we want to use the word satisfaction because it's a different word than you usually use when you say, I want to live happily ever after. It's a different word than you usually use when you mean success, I want success. We've been saying for a long time that success is the joy you feel. And today we're saying success is the joy you feel or the happiness you feel or the satisfaction that you feel. But there's something about exploring why something is more satisfying than something else is. So if for a little while, whenever you find yourself in a state of satisfaction, just stop and ask yourself, why do I feel so satisfied right now? Is it because I'm alone and my thoughts are clear? Is it because of the ambience? Why does this feel so satisfying to me? And as you ask that question a couple of thousand times in the next month or two, what's going to happen to you is you're going to become consciously aware of what you're doing with the energy in the moment which is what deliberate creation always is. What am I doing with the energy? It doesn't have anything to do with what anybody else is doing, with what anybody else has created. It doesn't have anything to do with what you've ever created, really. What am I doing with my focus right now? And as you start figuring it out that, well, because this is what the answer is going to come to over and over again, no matter what the subject, if you feel satisfied, these are the answers that are going to occur to you. You're going to say, you're going to know, oh, I'm in a state of non-resistance. And if the satisfaction is high, I'm in a state of non-resistance and I've been focusing enough that there's some momentum going toward the unfolding or the evolution of the expanding of my desire. My desire is growing without hindrance. That's what the feeling of satisfaction is. My desire is growing without hindrance. Can we talk more about that? That's really good. And I feel like I might have a desire and... Sometimes I have, I mean, like, for example... One time we said to a woman, we were trying to get her to talk about what she wanted. And she wasn't coming to any of it. And then we started naming a few things. And she said, oh, I don't want that. I've already got that. 
I've already got that. I've already got that. Which made it evident to her and to everyone else, certainly to us, and we amplified it, is that a lot of people think that desire or wanting is only about things not yet manifested. And so you don't realize that you could focus upon a lot of things that are already in your experience with appreciation and that causes momentum to expand which brings more satisfaction. We've been saying to you for years that when you ask it is given. Step one, life causes you to ask. Step two, source gives it to you. Step three is you've got to be in the receiving mode. Today we want to say to you, you've got to feel satisfied to be in the receiving mode. If you're not feeling satisfaction, you're not in the receiving mode. So could you be looking at something that you want that has not yet manifested and feel satisfaction at the same time? It's not logical to have something that you want and be looking right at the absence of it and be feeling satisfaction at the same time. But could you be focused upon anything else in the world that's easy for you to feel satisfaction about and at the same time be an allower in this moment of that? That's this new piece that you are so ready to begin applying. What causes my satisfaction? You know what your satisfaction is? Your satisfaction is being one with who you are. Your satisfaction is having no gap between you and your inner being. But your inner being, friends, ah! Your inner being has expanded so much just now. Your inner being keeps being more. You got to keep up. You got to keep up with your inner being. And do we mean you got to keep manifesting? No. You got to vibrationally keep up. You caused your inner being to expand. If you don't keep up, then you don't feel satisfaction. So satisfaction is the basis of my happiness. Satisfaction is the basis of my success. Let me call it satisfied instead of happy and let me call it satisfied instead of successful and let me call it satisfied instead of manifestation. You know that feeling, don't you know that feeling? Ah, ah, that's nice. Ah, ah, this feels so good. Ah, ah, satisfaction. Just go for satisfaction just for a little while. Sometimes people would say to us, especially in the beginning of meeting us, and they would say, Oh, Abraham. I've been wanting so many things for a long time and all of a sudden, bam, 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 manifestations all over the place. It's like I was holding a rubber band back and I let go of it. Now all kinds of things are manifesting. And we say it's because you have been desirous of so much you haven't been letting in. And now in looking at life with little different premises than you've been approaching it, as we get you to think in terms of being a vibrational perceiver rather than a doer or even a feeler rather than a talker as you just start approaching it just a little bit different then you start finding some new ways into some things that your pattern of thought has been blocking mm -hmm. you ever been with a friend and when you sit down you kind of have the same conversation over and over and over again and it's often about something that they want that isn't coming about and they just think that maybe one more dialogue about it will give them the breakthrough <laughs> but it won't one more dialogue about it doesn't give you the breakthrough. You've got to find a way to find the satisfaction factor. Now, maybe the friend that you're visiting with can help you see it in another way and maybe it can soften a little resistance, but still, it's really slow going. So, Abraham, could it really be as simple as I've got 10 things I really want and one of them is so satisfying. Is it really so simple that I could just focus only on that one and the other nine would happen? Yeah? Abraham, there's 10 things I want and almost all of them are in a really satisfying place for me. But there's one thing I'm still working on. Could I mess up the satisfaction factor of the other nine by focusing upon the one I'm trying hard on? Yep. <laughs> so now we have some questions. Do you believe that your inner being exists? Mm -hmm. Do you believe that there's a vortex of your expansion and evolution that is in existence, that is being responded to by law of attraction and is expanding and evolving and becoming? Mm -hmm. Do you believe that your emotions are your indicator of how in sync with that you are or not? Mm -hmm. Doesn't the desire for satisfaction seem like just the most practical application of your blending? And if you are more often blended because you're not doing that thing you do that is keeping you from being blended, like talk about what's not working, oh... Isn't it logical that just by focusing on more things that give you satisfaction, 
that more of what you want will come? Is the path to what you want more work? Is it hard work? No. Is it wrestling others to the ground and killing them? <laughs> Is it more examination of it? Is it finding something to feel good about now? Is it deliberately going to where you can get the best view of the sunset or the sunrise? That is satisfying, isn't it? Is it a massage? Can be. Is it something delightfully prepared for you to eat? Now you can mess all of those things up with contradictory thought, but are those things easier? Is it easier for you to feel satisfied when you're on vacation or when you're at work? We're just asking when you're on vacation or when you're at work. Have you gone deaf? <laughs> Is it easier for you to feel satisfaction when you are on vacation or when you are at work? Yes. It took a while for you to admit that. Like you thought somebody was going to walk right in the room and fire you on the spot. <laughs> So what is it about vacation that is more satisfying? You feel freer? So is freedom, is you getting to choose what you do more satisfying than someone else choosing what you do? So this isn't hard, is it? It's more satisfying to be on vacation than it is to be at work. We just want to know if you know the difference between what's satisfying and what isn't. You do. So now... Can you always be on vacation? Yes. <laughs> You've read too many of our books. <laughs> it's not logical that you could always be on vacation, is it? This is not going where you think it's going. We're not trying to lead you to being satisfied at work. Let's just face it, work sucks. <laughs> We're having fun with you. We want you to make the distinction between what satisfies you more than other things. You've let somebody else tell you what's right for you to feel, what's right for you to do. We want you to awaken to what's satisfying to you. If you don't acknowledge that you feel better when you're free to do what you want, and you're saying, no, actually, I'm much happier when I'm doing all of the things that other people want me to do, then there's no hope for you ever finding your guidance system. If you can't tell what's hot and what's cold or what feels good and what doesn't feel good, then your guidance will not work for you. So we're talking about the satisfaction factor because the satisfaction factor is what's predominant in your emotional guidance system. And if you're not willing to admit what feels better, then you have no guidance. You see what we're getting at? So let's say that you have listened to our rampage and you are now acknowledging that you do know on almost every subject what feels better to you. This feels better than this. This feels better than this. This feels better than this. Do you think that you have the ability? Now, we're not talking about the manifestations. We're not talking about the things that you're doing that you have to do. We're just asking you, is it possible for you to turn your attention to more of the things that are satisfying and away from more of the things that are not satisfying? Can you turn on a television program and listen to it and feel whether it's satisfying to you or not? And once you've made that determination, do you think that you now have a stronger impetus or wisdom to move in the direction of what is satisfying and therefore away from the direction of what isn't satisfying? Well, then you're off and running. There will be momentum building quickly toward the things that matter to you. And the resistance that has been hindering you about things that really matter to you will begin dissipating so quickly that your receptive mode of being aware, your feeling of what to do, your impulses are going to be so keen that people are going to begin noticing the difference in your flow. You'll be less halting. You'll be more sure-footed. You'll be critical, not at all. You'll be more complimentary. But most of all, you'll have an attitude, a mood of ease and satisfaction about you. You're going to look like the cat that swallowed the canary. You ever see those people? You know something's going on. You can just tell something's going on. They're not going to tell you what it is, but you know something's going on. That's the way you're going to appear to those who don't know what's going on. And meanwhile, that new found mood that will continue to gather momentum until you will really own it 
is the greatest tool or advantage that we've ever been able to point you toward. We've been telling you for a long time that life is supposed to feel good to you and that life is supposed to be fun and that you get what you want, that the universe is on your side, that when you ask for it, it is given. And now it's time for you to believe that for you. It's time for you to let the universe show you how ready it is for you. And so let's see how well we can say this to you. When you think that it's all about the manifestation, manifestations are not going to thrill you that long. And there's going to be a big gap in between them. But when you get it, that the manifestation is just what you finally got ready for and that it's just part of the process. Here it is. You didn't need it to come into this fruition for the satisfaction. You were satisfied here and 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 you were satisfied here. But this is not going to maintain the satisfaction forevermore. Happily ever after doesn't mean a little satisfied and a little satisfied and then a little more and then a little more and then a little more and then a little more. Happily ever after means satisfied now and satisfied now and satisfied now and satisfied now. Satisfied with the quieted mind. Oh, yes. And satisfied with the emotion that moves through. Yes, yes, yes. And satisfied with that first thought, juicy, oh, so good. And satisfied with that impulse, love this impulse. Yes, 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 yes. Satisfied, 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 satisfied. Sure, it manifested. Satisfied, 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 satisfied. Sure, it manifests. Satisfied, 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 satisfied. And satisfaction always means what? It means one thing and one thing only. In tune with what source knows. You see? That was really good. That was really good. We have enjoyed this interaction immensely. It is time for you to go back into the real world <laughs> to experience more good stuff. There is great love here for you. And for now, we are complete.